So, in my life, I've had many humanities moments, and I would say that I'm really only here because of those humanities moments. And I think for us as scholars, as academics, as activists, we have so many questions about what the humanities is, what it does, and what it can be. And so for me growing up in an Irish, French-Canadian immigrant in Britain, it was really about asking the questions about what do those textbooks tell us and what do they not tell us? And so as a kid growing up, we, will, we learned about world empire, we learned about the great British empire and its power across the world, and we learned about its wealth. We learned about the banks, the, com the commerce, the capitalist enterprises of the Western world and we never learnt what they were trading in. And so my research and where I began was to try and think through these questions. How did we get those spices? How did we get that cotton? How did we get those vast empires of fiscal power? How did we get there? And the answer, of course, is in slavery. And so the big question in thinking through humanities research is, how do you get the stories that we are told and how do you get to the stories that we are not told? And that, for me, has always been the exciting part. And so in starting that journey, I hit a lot of dead ends and a lot of wrong turns, which you should in humanities research, where there's danger and difficulty, in trying to answer that question. Because the victors, the masters, don't want to tell that story. Audre Lorde says very powerfully, the master will never dismantle the master's house um, of its own volition. And so my research and my ideas really became very much inspired by that question. How do you get to people's lives that have not been told? And so, as we all know, transatlantic slavery was an institution that was 400 years, officially speaking, and involved millions of children, women, and men. And so the beginning part of the story was trying to find those stories in written accounts. And now you can find those stories if you look hard enough. And the brilliant humanities research people are doing at this center and in various places all across the world have done stunning work in looking through plantation ledgers, in looking through death records, in trying to find those nameless, faceless, and bodiless souls, really. But it only gets us so far. And as I found with humanities, the bigger question was, how do you get to a whole life? How do you get to understand a person who is shackled in the west coast of Africa, whose entire world is taken from them, not only their families, but their jewelry, their fashion, their belief systems, as they're incarcerated in ships to the modern world? Part of slavery was about breaking the spirit as well as the body. And this is where humanities really helps us, by looking at grave markings, by looking at jewelry patterns, by looking at quilting traditions. We get to the stories not only of those who made it out, and the one thing that I found in starting this research really was that in looking in those textbooks, in finding those stories, the written record gave us the stories of those who survived. Dead women, children, and men, as we know, tell no stories. So you have to use every humanities tool. You have to look not only at official written historical records, the plantation records, or the official material. You've got to look at other kinds, the quilting techniques, the traditions of color symbolism that are handed down through generations, the ways people live in the spite of death. And that really, for me, was the humanities moment. How do you get to that point of resistance in the face of totalitarian power? And humanities research is our answer. It's where our humanity should be. It's where our humanity should be going. And I would say it's a way out of no way. All the thinkers, philosophers, enslaved and free that I have the privilege of working with all speak of that moment. How do you show and tell issues of bodily scarring, but how do you tell wounds upon a soul that are deeper, that have no name, that language fails us? And so humanities for me is asking questions. It's thinking through the questions we can answer, the questions that we can't, and the questions that we as responsible citizens, as well as humanities scholars, should engage our lives in trying to answer. I think a light bulb moment for me too came, I came from this Irish background, this French Canadian background, and we were very much within a kind of white British setting in thinking through the questions of the stories that don't make it into official histories. And with the various family members I had who went through serious struggle, serious health issues, they didn't want to read the great British classics, the official stories. They wanted to read the stories of Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Harriet Jacobs, women, children, and men who made it with nothing to get somewhere and to really follow what Langston Hughes said, whose words are always in my heart, I'm still here. <laughs>